It's May 1944, somewhere in the big English Channel. There's this bunch of brave pigeons just minding their own business, taking a nice flight. Then a mean hawk shows up out of nowhere, and it's on the hunt. The hawk dives down and grabs those pigeons, putting them in big trouble. Fast forward a few days, one tough pigeon manages to make it to Commander Gutsy. It's got some bad news to share. Unfortunately, all those messenger pigeons didn't make it. They had a super scary time. Commander Gutsy is shocked by this unexpected twist. Those pigeons were like the A-team of his bird squadron, and losing them could mean big trouble. So now he's got to find new fast and nimble birds as soon as possible, or his team's in big trouble. Ever since World War II began, pigeons have been working really hard on the battlefield. They deliver secret messages to the good guys, the allies. These brave birds, part of the Royal Mail Pigeon Service, risk their lives by flying across enemy territory. They help make important missions succeed and make sure vital war plans get where they need to go. Besides the messengers, there are doves that give food to the troops and caring nurses that help take care of the messengers. Now, if the pigeon wants to join this cool club, they've got to prove they're super fit and tough. There's this little pigeon named Valiant who has big dreams. He tells his buddy Felix, who happens to be a seagull, that he wants to be one of these special birds in the royal service. It's not easy, but Felix tells him to keep going and never give up on his dream. One day, Commander Gutsy and his gang stop at their hangout for a drink. Valiant, who's not so big, decides to ask about joining the military. But when he does, everyone around him starts laughing and making fun of him. They think he's too small and weak for it, but Valiant doesn't let the teasing get to him. He's determined to follow his dreams. Then Commander Gutsy sees something special in Valiant's eyes. He tells Valiant that there's a chance for anyone to join the military in London the next day. Valiant is excited but also a bit nervous, so he sets off on his big adventure. Now, while all this is happening, there's a mean guy named General Von Talon at a military base near the English Channel. He's got a bird locked up and wants to get important war secrets out of it. The next morning, Valiant says goodbye to his worried mom, Elsa. He tells her he wants to be a messenger pigeon, even though she's really worried about him leaving. Her heart is heavy with concern as he goes on his way. Before Valiant leaves, he says a heartfelt goodbye to his friend Felix, who wishes him good luck. After a long journey, Valiant gets to London and meets Bugsy, a tricky pigeon known for getting food by playing tricks. But this time, Bugsy's tricks have made other birds mad at him. Valiant accidentally gets mixed up in this mess. He tells them he's trying to join the Royal Mail Pigeon Service. To avoid the angry birds, Bugsy decides to go with Valiant to the military base. When they get to the training center, the officer there doesn't think Valiant and Bugsy are good enough to be carrier pigeons. But then Valiant mentions Commander Gutsy and everything changes. They're allowed to sign up and join the other recruits. Bugsy, who's no longer being chased by the angry birds, says goodbye to the young pigeons and tries to leave. But just when he's about to get away, something bad happens. The door slams shut and Bugsy realizes he's stuck and has to serve in the military. The pigeons hop on a motorcycle and soon meet their new friends. There are Tailfeather and Toughwood, two strong but not so smart brothers. And then there's Lofty, a smart pigeon but not so strong. After a while, Sergeant Monty shows up to say hello and tells them they've got six weeks of tough training before their first mission. Now on the bad guy's side, there's a pigeon named Mercury who's in big trouble. They're trying to get him to spill the beans about his mission. They make him listen to awful music for hours, and he's starting to go a little crazy. When it's clear he won't talk a mean, General Von Talon tells his pals he used truth serum on Mercury. Within a few hours, Mercury starts blabbing all the secret stuff to the enemy. After doing a bunch of push-ups and running around, the recruits are finally allowed to go to the infirmary. There, they meet a bird named Victoria, and Valiant gets a vaccine. Bugsy tries to sneak away, but they catch him and make him face his fear of baths. But as soon as he's clean, Bugsy finds a way to get dirty again. Then they learn about the food they'll be eating in the barracks, and they trim their feathers to fit in their uniforms. Finally, they're shown their dormitory, which is like a not-so-nice garbage dump where they'll sleep for the next month and a half. The next morning, super early, Sergeant Monty wakes up the team for more training. During a flying test, Valiant has an accident and Bugsy has to take him to the infirmary. Victoria, the medic, starts worrying about Valiant because he's been there three times in just one week. They bandage Valiant's foot and he plans to go back to training, but he has another accident. In the second week of training, Sergeant Monty tells the new pigeons about all the dangers they might face on their missions. They need to watch out for storms, bombs exploding, and especially hawks. Hawks are huge, fast birds that can fly really, really fast, over 300 kilometers per hour. They're scary and Monty teaches the recruits how to spot them and avoid them. Even at night, the tough training keeps going. They have to get strong to carry important message capsules, be quick to get through dangerous war areas, and be able to dodge enemy threats. They also need to have lots of endurance because they have to fly through bad weather and go really far over the big ocean with no brakes. 
A few weeks later, Commander Gutsy shows up at the base with bad news. They lost a whole group of pigeons in Belgium, and now these recruits are the last hope. Monty doesn't think they're fully ready, but they're sent on a mission the next day because there's no other team available. Like always, Valiant gets hurt during training and goes to the infirmary. There, he talks to Victoria about his first mission, and she worries about his safety, hoping to see him again. Later, Sergeant Monty gives a really inspiring speech to his team, telling them they're now Commander Gutsy's support squad, and they have to make sure this important mission succeeds. Suddenly, Commander Gutsy shows up and says how important this mission is. It could change the whole war. At their last meal before they leave, Bugsy tries to eat as many crumbs as he can. He tries to convince Monty to let him skip the mission, but Monty says no. So Bugsy decides to sneak away during the night. Before Valiant leaves, he talks to Bugsy and finds out that Bugsy wants to go back to where they first met because he misses his freedom. They say goodbye, and Bugsy accidentally wakes up the rest of the team when he finds a can of sardines. Even though Bugsy feels a little embarrassed, he sticks to his decision to leave and wishes his friends good luck. The next day, the four of them get ready to fly to France to get a top-secret message for the British Army. They get on the plane. Just when the gates are about to close, Bugsy comes back and Valiant is really happy to see him. As the plane takes off, Victoria looks sad because she's wondering if she'll ever see Valiant again. While they're on the plane, Valiant thanks Bugsy for coming back and Bugsy admits that it's the first time he's done something really noble. During the flight, they fly over a war zone and the plane gets attacked, so they have to leave. But they can't throw their cages out through the emergency door. Commander Gutsy tries to free himself, but he gets stuck. Valiant gets really worried about him, especially when he sees the plane explode in the sky. After they land safely, the group feels really relieved and happy that everyone made it through the tough situation. But Valiant has some sad news to share. He tells them that their captain couldn't jump out of the plane and died when it exploded. Now they're all alone and don't know what to do next. Valiant suggests they find a safe place to meet up and figure out their next steps. They take a vote, and most of them agree that Valiant should go check out a hidden spot and see if there are any dangers. When they get to this hidden place, they find their friend Tailfeather stuck in a fancy cup. Luckily, they work together and get him out without any harm. Just as they're saving Tailfeather, they meet two surprising new friends. Charles the mouse and Rolo, her buddy, saw the plane crash and decided to help because they love their country. The mice become their guides and show the pigeons where the hidden message is. But the way is dangerous because scary hawks are guarding it, so they have to be really careful. The pigeons follow Charles on the ground and eventually get to a secret safe spot in the sewer. They go through a tunnel and finally find where the message is hidden. Loffy carries Charles in the air and the Pigeon Brothers carry Rolo. While they're flying, the hawks start chasing them. Charles helps the pigeons dodge the hawks in the air. When they get to a cafe, the mouse says a secret password to Jacku, and they get into the attic just in time, escaping from the hungry birds. The old mouse gives them the message and says it's super important to get it to London, no matter what. It's really important for the war and lots of people's lives. Bugsy decides to put the message in his capsule to make sure the mission has a better chance of success. The group splits up to trick the Hawks, and Bugsy and Valiant manage to sneak away without being seen. Their plan seems to be working until one Hawk figures it out and chases after them. Valiant does something risky to trap the Hawk and Thorns, but the Hawk gets free and catches Valiant. Bugsy steps in bravely to save Valiant, but ends up in the Thorns too. While Bugsy struggles to get out of the Thorns, he gets captured and taken to the enemy's base. Valiant tries to catch up, but all the gates close and he can't get in. Cufflink the Hawk takes Bugsy to his boss, General Von Talon, who really wants the message. The Hawk tells his buddies to lock Bugsy up with Mercury, who's already gone crazy. Valiant feels really sad because he couldn't save his friend, and he's about to lose hope. But then, out of the blue, the rest of his team shows up. Commander Gutsy comes too, and it's a big relief for Valiant. The captain talks about his scary experience after the plane blew up. His parachute didn't work, and he fell really far down. He had to fight off wolves and go through barbed wire to find his group. Just as he finishes telling the story, Valiant tells everyone that Hawks have taken Bugsy and the message. Commander Gutsy decides to go into the enemy base to get the important message. He tells his friends to wait outside while he does this dangerous mission. Meanwhile, General Von Talon goes to take a shower and tells his pals to get his fancy cloak. Gutsy checks out the area and realizes the enemy fortress is super tough to get into. So he comes back and asks his support team for help. The only way in is through a cannon barrel and only a tiny hummingbird can fit. Valiant sees a chance to use his small size to his advantage for the first time. He leaves his stuff behind and sneaks into the hideout. He finds the cage where his friends were kept, but they're not there anymore, just some sad remains. But Valiant keeps going and luckily finds Bugsy in another cage. They get the message, but Valiant is surprised to see that there are lots of stuffed pigeons used as decorations. 
Valiant decides to swallow the message to keep it safe from thieves and promises to free Bugsy. But Bugsy tells him to focus on the mission and forget about him because the hawk has the key to his cage. Valiant doesn't listen and goes to the bathroom, using the hawk's bath time as a chance to grab the key. He pretends to be Cufflink, gives the brush to the enemy general, and almost gets the key. Just when it looks bad, the two henchmen come by, but they get knocked out by stuff falling on them. After Valiant frees the captured pigeons, they all leave the enemy fortress and meet up with the rest of their group. They start flying back home, but hawks start chasing them. The pigeons change their formation to distract the hawks and give Valiant a chance to escape and finish the mission. Then General Von Talon shows up and sees Valiant try and get away. He decides to go after Valiant to try and catch him. Valiant hides on a ship and slips away in the fog. When he gets to dry land, he sees that the hawk is still chasing him. He narrowly avoids getting caught as he crosses a bridge next to a freight train. As he flies over a peaceful lake, the hawk is getting closer. Luckily, Valiant is back in his hometown and when his friend Felix sees the hawk, he warns everyone. Valiant knows the area well and cleverly hides in an abandoned house. The hawk gets stuck in a wooden beam and can't get out. Local birds attack the intruder to help Valiant. Valiant is determined to confuse the enemy and make things better. He uses a windmill to trick his enemy into a trap. Valiant catches Von Talon and then goes on a trip to London. He has an important job to give the secret message to Sergeant Mee. When he gets to London, Sergeant Mee is really surprised to see Valiant, who people thought was the weakest soldier in his group, come back from the mission victorious and safe. Valiant gives the important message to his boss but falls down because he's so tired. When the British army gets the message from their friends in France, they come up with a new plan. And it helps the Allies win in World War II. Valiant gets a promotion for being so brave, and his friends get merit badges for their great help in the fight for freedom. After that big day, Valiant becomes a famous war hero. People in his town really respect him, and the local doves love him. But Valiant only has eyes for Victoria, the girl he fell in love with when he joined the military. During World War II, animals did a lot to save lives, and some of them got a special award called the Dickin Medal, which is a big honor. Out of 54 medals given during the war, 18 went to dogs, 3 to horses, 1 to a cat, and a hopping 32 to pigeons. This shows that pigeons were some of the biggest unsung heroes in history. So the moral of the story is always remember, in the wild world of wartime pigeons, the key to success is to never let a bath-loving hawk stand between you and your mission. So always carry a rubber ducky and some bubble bath for emergencies.